Hey folks, what's up? And we are at the... Oh, pardon my uh, manners. First of all, let me introduce myself. This is Nina Yankee with you all. And we are at the Piaco International Airport, which is located on the island of Trinidad, which is also part of a twin island, of a twin island state, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, the suddenly most islands of the Caribbean, the Caribbean chain. All right and today like i said we are at piaco international airport and we are in the zebo 737-800 aircraft a very uh, lovely aircraft indeed and today we, we, we will be flying to the hiwanora international uh, airport in saint lucia which is another island in the caribbean just uh, north of trinidad all right so we're going today from tango tango papa papa tango tango Papa Papa to Tango Lima Papa Lima all right so good and like I said uh, we are in the Zebo cockpit and I'm looking around here now just to make sure that uh, we have certain things uh, down we have most of the, 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 the plane is uh, configured for uh, takeoff you're gonna look out the window now see what's going on here um, and here we have uh, the, the, the announcements uh, being made. So you know we're going to be pushing back from the gate in just a short shot. We have some of our peeps in the, uh, in the um, <coughs> passenger section who's willing to share some of their footage as well with, uh, with, with this captain. Right? So we still have some doors that are open. Uh, we're going to be closing those doors in just a few. As a matter of fact, uh, we can hear them close now. All right, closing up. And we're just going to be looking around the cockpit to ensure that we have everything the way that it should be, right? Great. So if we look here now, we see we have our uh, our speed bugs. Everything is in there. We have... Uh, uh, what we're going to do actually now, the route is already uh, planned, has been already programmed. But I have been wondering, you know, which... Uh, um, <clears throat> which approach should I take? And uh, so far, I have the NDB approach loaded, but I'm I'm, I'm not a bit uncomfortable with the NDB approach. So I'm wondering if you know to take the RNAV approach instead, All right? So I mean, what do you think? What What do you think I should should do out there? I think maybe I don't know. Um, but here you see we have it set up as well. All right. I think. Um, hmm. Let's see. Let's get into it. Let's erase this and see what's happening. You know what? I think I'll do the uh, RNAV here, yeah, and I will choose Rebo as my uh, uh, transition uh, waypoint. And uh, so, how we have it set up here now? We're gonna just delete the Bravo November Echo and go direct Sierra Victor, direct Rebo to start our approach to begin our approach into Hiwanora International Airport. All right. So that's how it's gonna be. Um, just looking at a few more things here, making sure everything is a okay. You know, I really love this aircraft. I really love this aircraft, and it's so amazing that um, uh, this aircraft is free. I, I, I don't know how long it's going to be free for again, but I mean, we, we're thankful for small mercies. Um, and uh, explain, of course, such a great platform for this aircraft. So, we're looking around now, making sure. We have everything there and the overhead. I mean, I could do this the traditional way and use a um, uh, uh, what you call a checklist and everything. I just uh, I didn't. And now we're gonna start our pushback, right? So we see the uh, tug um, rolling up to the uh, nose wheel there to the nose gear to begin our pushback sequence and look at that there this is uh, actually the Nina repaint Nina Yankee Tango Alpha Bravo aircraft with the uh, um, with the Madiba um, woods on the right side of the front the front uh, fuselage and the next side uh, of, the, of the fuselage has some words written in tribute to our very own Calypso Rose who's a Calypso icon um, with you know the wow one of our greatest Calypso icons in on the island of Trinidad here Trinidad and Tobago right so we pay homage to both uh, Nelson Mandela and Calypso Rose there right so yeah 
we are in the cockpit and um, getting ready for the pushback. And if you look carefully, again, you can see that I have my only speed bus. I have my um, speed there set to 149, which is our V2 speed. We'll be flying in the direction of uh, 104, which is the uh, runway heading. And um, now, initially, we really cleared up to 7,000 feet, but I like to, um, that is uh, approach, right? Approach clears you up to 7,000 feet. Uh, but I like to um, to have my uh, my altitude set at about 10,000 feet, you know, um, right? Now, usually what happens here at Piaco in actuality, they would, they, the pilots would contact, uh, I think, Apron, Piaco Apron, and they would usually, um, hmm, they would get what is called a pre-departure clearance. And after having their pre-departure clearance now, they would, actually no, they would contact ground for the pre-departure clearance and uh, start to be corrected. And after getting the pre-departure clearance from ground, they will contact apron for push and start. All right. So we just, we're not going to do, we're not actually doing any uh, ATC, um, whether live ATC, that is VATSIM or the ATC in x -Play. We're not using either of them, but sometimes I like to make it a good practice to, um, to change my frequencies according to you know the leg of flight that I'm in, that I'm in. so if ever I have to do uh, a VATSIM flight or anything like that it becomes pretty easy you know um, I haven't flown on VATSIM for a long time man wow maybe I need to all right so there I'm setting I'm, I'm on the uh, I'm on the ground I've already got the, the clearance from uh, the, 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 um, the clearance to push and start from um, apron and I've switched I'm now on ground so that when I, I, I ask a clearance a taxi I can get that from ground and uh, the 18 118 decimal uh, one that is to switch the tower when I'm taxiing out uh, yeah good right so we good to go everything is set um, yeah we have enough fuel now this flight is actually it takes you about let me see this flight should be about 40 to 45 minutes not that it's not that long of a flight right um it's just up basically up the islands all right and there we have it we have our pushback and we've seen some of the other aircrafts there those are the atr uh caribbean airlines this is of course caribbean airlines um a 737 800 uh some of the atr services service the islands service the air bridge between trinidad and tobago um, today we are doing a flight it's sort of a stop off and after this flight I intend to fly to Boston now it's not an actual route for Caribbean Airlines it's not an actual route but you know sometimes I like to just um, do my own thing right maybe maybe Caribbean Airlines themselves could probably look at doing a, a route like that yeah all right so we uh, doing the startup sequence now we're just getting ready to do the startup and we're gonna fire up and we're just gonna make sure that we are clear on both sides i see we have one of the atrs taxiing in we'll, we'll see uh what happens with that all right uh, by the way the traffic program i'm using is will traffic um yeah it's pretty okay uh have some issues with aircrafts not recognizing other aircrafts but now we're firing up engine number two so we're gonna look at that there watch it we're gonna get to uh n2 of 25 percent and then we're gonna introduce the fuel let's see let's make sure we have a good start 24 and there we go introduce the fuel and we hear the engine two spooling up there as we do our push I wonder where that ATR is alright so we have a good start on engine number two and we're gonna go now to engine number one in just a short while yeah mm -hmm. push back is really nice starting up engine number one now the thing with um, oh there's a liat atr liat is a, a another airline that um, services the caribbean uh, well they do it uh, in flights throughout the caribbean uh, right they operate uh, only atrs as far as i know all right and, uh, 
here we have a good getting a good start on engine number one and there is the caribbean airlines atr taxing into place so it looks like everything worked out we didn't bump into each other and everything was good um one problem i have though with wheel traffic is that i don't know i think they generate too many of these atrs we don't operate caribbean airlines does not operate all these AT well we, the amount of ATRs I see, because if you look carefully, there will be ATRs around the entire airport, Caribbean Airlines, and we do not have all those ATRs. So I don't know why. That's a problem I tried to fix before, but uh, to no avail. So we, we organize it now. We're getting the cockpit ready. Uh, just making the checks on the overhead here before we, we, we um, taxi. Um, i put these down there, the window heat, probe A and B. Get that down, our uh, uh, hydraulic pumps. And we gotta get some air flowing through the cabin, some nice cool breeze. So we put that down. Of course, we needed that to start. And now that we have a good start, we could uh, introduce, uh, let the people in the, in the, in the uh, passenger section feel comfortable. All right. Um, we're gonna, Good, so the tool is disconnected and we should be heading out to taxi. Just a few, this is where, uh, <coughs> this is where the pilot will contact uh, Piaco Ground and say that uh, Piaco Ground Caribbean Airlines 586, and that's the flight number that I gave it. Caribbean Airlines 586, we are ready for taxi and they would usually get um, the, as especially pushing back from this gate, the Taxi instructions would be taxi uh, to Zulu, which is straight ahead of us. Ta taxi to Zulu, uh, taxi Zulu Alpha, and upon reaching Alpha, contact tower one one eight decimal one. All right, uh, right. So we're just organizing our flaps there. Yeah. I like to do these things a lot of times with the mouse, you know, it gives you that feel as if you're doing it with your hand. Well, I mean, I can, I have uh, buttons on the joystick that I can press, but you know, sometimes I like to do it that way. All right, um, yeah, we should be ready to taxi now. Now we need to do is to put our taxi lights on. There we go. And let's get our brakes off. And how is it in the passenger section? Yeah, man, good, beautiful. Yeah. Now this airport is a freeway airport that was done by a guy named Sky Sickle, I think. But it was also um, modified by a good friend of mine by the name of, uh, uh, I'll give his name as Stanley. Yeah. Right. Uh, he has a username that I forgot actually. But, you know, he did a pretty good job of modifying the airport and some other sceneries around the island so you gotta give him some props for that so we are taxiing to zulu and in a short short what we usually do at this point in time we contact tower tower is going to give us uh clearance to taxi alpha to alpha one intersection and in this case well alpha alpha one intersection bravo two then taxi to bravo three which is at the end of the runway where we're going to come onto the runway and line up in this case we're not going to taxi straight to the end of the runway we're going to be taking off at the alpha alpha one intersection we're not that heavy today as you can see the fuel there we're not that heavy so we're going to take off from alpha one intersection we don't need a full length runway today uh, most times the what the props those props like the atrs and stuff there they will usually hardly ever take off full length they, they use the alpha one intersection all right so we are taxiing to the runway via zulu and um at this point it's probably a good time to uh to brief you on what we're gonna do our plans how we're gonna take off our departure sequence everything right no biggie today as a matter of fact departing out of piaco is not really that technical there's no um sids well actually there are sids but there's no pilots don't really use it it's not that um thing and this is not a busy airport per se you know flights are not departing every um uh, three minutes or anything like that right so it's pretty straightforward usually what happens 
if uh, if the departure is to the north of the airport, northeast, northwest, what have you. Oh, I just had a wet moment in there. Yeah. <laughs> So the part is to the north, to the north, northwest, northeast, east of the airport. Uh, we will fly runway heading to a height of 4,100 feet and then uh, make a left turn to cross the mountains, the range, the northern range. Because if you look well, uh, you will see in a short shot that there are some mountains just to the north of the airport. Well, you must get to that altitude unless you request from the uh, from the controllers unless you request um, uh, a, a VMC climb or something like that see that's those are the mountains there to the north of the to the to the of the airport all right so yeah unless you you know it means that you have visual with the airport and you can maintain you know your own altitude but uh, it's always um, it's, it's and even if you're coming in via the north you are allowed to descend to 4,100 feet to pass over the range and anything after that you'll be after the range once you've cleared the range you think oh if you're doing it visual you of course you maintain your right so we but today today we're not going to be doing that we are going to be making a right turn out uh we will probably climb to about 1500 feet and make a right turn out sometimes this right turn out is done even if you're going not uh for sometimes due to weather if there's weather to the north of the field or the northeast of the field or the northwest the pilot might opt to do a right turn to set course over the uh, Tango Romeo India NDB which is just uh, four miles west of the airport and is in line with the runway so you set that up or you, you or you could set course over the field itself um, so for that reason or sometimes you just want to um sometimes you just want to to, to take the scenic route <laughs> you know or just to gain some altitude before um you know crossing the, the range and stuff like that so today we're going to be climbing to 1500 feet on the road uh, and we are going to uh, approaching one zero make a right turn out and we are going to set course just to beam the field uh, to head north all right there we go take another peep outside the windows see yes man. beautiful all right so we just about ready we have our landing lights there on no they're actually we're okay with that's good landing lights on let's get our strobes on and our wing lights All right, let's tell the others to get ready. Let's hear what they have to say. Oh, all righty. Time to move. Okay, the cabin is secured. Have a good let's flight. roll. Let's rumble those engines and let's get the hell out of here. Here we go. All right. Take off power set and we are rolling. Eighty knots. Eighty knots. And here we are V one. Rotate. Let's go. V one, V one, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. looking out the window a little bit to the north there the northern range Churchill Roosevelt Highway all right and then to the south yes man all right there we go we're gonna be making our location of VNAV there and we are going to be making a 
the autopilot on. There we go. And uh, we're just about there. We're going to be making our right turn out now. All right. Now, today I choose the right turn out, honestly, for two reasons to gain altitude and, you know, I think it's a much more scenic route. But I don't know how scenic it's going to be because we are approaching some clouds. Uh, so, oh, that in front of us, there's the Karuni Arena Dam right there. All right. It's amazing though, uh, the, the cloudy light and dark areas, how the cloud cast shadows, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, but I love explaining that. And there we go, into the clouds. <laughs> so we're gonna just hold this heading just for a short bit. There's the east coast of uh, the island. Right. And we need to get our right. we need to change uh, adjust the altimeter, right? Good, that's done. Right. And we're gonna turn now. To set course direct Sierra Victor in just a short, we're going to be setting course direct Sierra, Sierra Victor. I, uh, for the scenery now, you're seeing that white patch there. For the scenery, I used Ortho 4 XP. Oh, there's a, a little a glimpse of the capital city port of Spain, just to our uh, what can I say? Our seven o'clock, our eight o'clock. All right. Yeah, for the scenery, I used. Oh, there is uh, that is the island of Grenada, and that's the island of Tobago. That's our sister island there. So we just pass in between both islands there. Right. Yep. Okay, hey, what's up? So we are now on the approach. We're just on the approach into Hiwanora. Right. Um and we are turning final for the landing. Right. Now let me tell you quickly, I just wanted to let you know, I used Ortho 4 XP for the sceneries and stuff like that, but what I noticed, and I think all those who use for Ortho 4 XP will have the problem of the clouds and stuff, that's why I made reference to the white patch. Um, I think Ortho 4 XP along with uh, the mesh tool that I use, which is, I think it's Ultra Mesh HD4, something like that, um, it's, the, it's pretty good. But the only problem is those clouds and and problems in the cloud and um, there is a tool i know for removing the cloud but it's it's so time consuming that i decided not even bothering to use it you know but if someone comes up with a better tool or someone knows of a better tool feel free all right i think the series because those cl white spotty cloud stuff are the only things that kind of spoil the series but so far so good all right so we are Directly on the localizer inbound uh, runway one zero RNAV approach. Uh, let's get those things off there. Anti ice, you don't need them anymore. Temperature is okay, outside temperature that is. And we are now going to intercept the glide slope. The glide slope and put our gear downs. Gear down, sorry. And reduce our speed. Our fruit, so our final approach speed is, uh, I think, one four seven. All right, hundred and forty-seven knots. We're gonna come in with full flaps. Yeah. Come on. 
The island of St. Lucia has two major airports actually. This one, this particular one that we are flying to, this is Iwanora, um, to the south of the island. It's the south, southernmost uh, part of the island if, 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 we, if we look at it well. Um, and this is the international airport. There's a regional airport just to the northwest of the island and Castries, that is the George F. Charles Airport. Um, Caribbean Airlines, the, the ATR, they do a daily flight there every day. But this is a, a transition flight, so we're going to be leaving uh, Iwanora heading to Boston after this, all right? So at this point, I guess, you know, we would probably have gotten clearance to land, you know, and we are coming in. At some point, I'm, go in, I'm going to uh, disable the, um, disconnect the Autopilot, and we're gonna bring her in by hand. We have a nice uh, headwind on landing, uh, about 70 knots, I think. 17 knots, and uh, it's blowing coming directly at us. It's not bad. I'm just a little above the glide slope there. We're gonna disable the um, autopilot and just try to get back the glide slope. Sometimes it's better to come in a bit above than, than to come in under, yeah? To come in below the glide slope, right? So we're gonna do what we need to do, control the speed, adjust the speed as normal. We have our full flaps, we are fully configured for landing. Our speed brakes are armed. Our auto brakes are also armed uh, to two. Coming in, and there we captured the, the we have the glide slope now, and we are coming in on a three mile final. Usually, at this time, we have what is called a sterile cockpit, no one talks in the cockpit. So, let's see what happens. So we've increased in airspeed just a bit, so we're going to have to control that. There we go. We're going to get that airspeed down a bit. Thousand feet yeah. stabilized, Mr. Birch, as you said. All right, we're going to try to stabilize that airspeed. The puppies look, see, it, has, it seems to be telling us that we're too high. However, the glide slope is on point. But we'll see how it goes. Approaching one zero. Beautiful island of St. Lucia. Another beautiful Caribbean island. Uh, in the, I don't know what was that now. Uh, we'll have to check that on the ground. 500. All right, coming in pretty cool, pretty nice. Yes. Three approaching minimums. There we go. Minimums, that's good. 200 minimums. Just a bit high. We're going to make it. Mm -hmm. 50, 40, 30. Here we go. 20. thrusters there okay good so there we have it we are in Hiwanora St. Lucia ladies and gentlemen of course this is your captain speaking we want to thank you for flying Caribbean Airlines and uh, we're gonna be pulling up at gate 2 and, uh, of course you will listen to the instructions of the flight attendant who will guide you accordingly as to what you need to do those of you who are uh, traveling on with us and those of you who are uh, exiting here in St. Lucia, indeed. So that was not bad landing, was not bad landing. Uh, we're going to deal with the lights now, switch off for lights and we're going to exit on this taxiway and taxi to gate number two. All 
All right, and let's have a look at that uh, landing from outside because you know I have my uh, peeps uh, recording my landings, and you know. So let's see what it looks like from outside. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. There she is. Calypso Rose. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, that's it for now. I want to thank you for, uh, for viewing. Uh, this is actually my first ever narrated uh, explain video. So I want to, again, I want to thank you for viewing. And uh, I will continue to put up stuff as long as you are appreciating it i i don't see anybody doing much flights from the in the, in the caribbean region so these are the things that i'm going to be focusing on uh whether it's from some place in the caribbean to maybe jfk or, or miami or something like that right but most of my flights will be generated from the caribbean all right so once again thanks for watching and i do look forward uh, or you all can look forward to some more videos from yours truly, Nina Yankee. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you see. And uh, also you can follow me on Instagram, Nina Yankee. And uh, yeah, it's all good. Until the next one, this is Nina Yankee saying peace, blessings, and possibility.